Hello, this is Matt Nelson, and in today's video, we're going to look at how to prepare a dates table to work with our Microsoft Power Pivot data model. In the previous video, we were only working with the invoice date, and reporting revenue and margin on a daily basis is not all that useful because the data is too noisy. So instead of reporting on the daily basis, we want to report on the monthly or quarterly basis. So to do that, we can use what's called a common table expression, or CTE, to build up a list of numbers that we can then use to iterate the number of days from a lowest point in time to a highest point in time. So we declare a variable start and end. Starting date is a select statement pulling the minimum invoice date from the invoices table. And the ending variable is the maximum invoice date from the invoices table. And then we have our CTE down below. The way this CTE works is basically building a 2-bit to a 4-bit to an 8-bit to a 16-bit table. And we do that by cross-joining recursively. So we basically start out with a table 1 and 0 to give us 2 bits cross-join once, twice, and three times to increase the number of rows, which is just repeating the number one over and over again. But by the time it gets to the fourth iteration, then we get 16 bits or over 65,000 rows. We can then use this list of rows to iterate the number of days. So our iteration, is up through the date differential between start and end plus one. So it's inclusive. And then all we have to do is take the starting date plus the iteration minus one. So that's basically zero for the first one. So the first date will inclusively be the starting date. And then define the year, the month, and the quarter uh, using the date part function. So if we execute that, we get 1,247 rows, which represent all the dates in between the minimum and maximum date. The next step is to paste this into our data model. So let's go back to Excel, manage our data model. This time go to existing connections, and then open, write a query, we're going to call this the dates table, validate, and finish. So it actually is pretty quick to return all the dates. The next thing we want to do is define the fiscal period because in the worldwide importers database, the fiscal period begins on November 1st not January 1st. So we can just make a new spreadsheet, put the month number and the period. So we'll start with 11, 12, and then one through 10. And the fiscal period will be fiscal period one, two, three, etc. And with working with a small table like this, we can paste it directly into the data model. So the paste to new table feature is available. So we'll call this periods, press OK. And now we want to define our relationships. So go to diagram view. First thing we want to do is join month to month that will give us access to the period column as a type of VLOOKUP. It's not going to be a VLOOKUP, but it's similar in concept. And the other relationship is invoice date to the dates table. Go back to the data view and go back to the dates table. Now we want to add a new column and we do that with the related function. So we're going to pull the period column from the periods table. Let's 
and we'll rename this fiscal period. So that gives us the starting point to organize our data based on months and quarters and years. Sorry for the continuity break, but in order for this to work, we need to make sure that the date column is formatted as date, otherwise our joins will not work properly. Now to apply this to our graph. Here's the graph with the invoice date that we had before. So we can remove the invoice date timeline. And now we can go to all tables, remove invoice date from the axis, and then replace it with the year or the month. Now we have cleaner data to report. So from here, we can further expand the questions that we can answer from our dashboard. And I hope you join me for the next video. And thank you for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.